Well, good afternoon, church. So, here we are. It has certainly been a strange and difficult time for many of us. In the course of the last two weeks, we've seen nearly unbelievable changes in the world and even in the communities in which we live. The shutdown of sporting events and concerts, schools, restaurants, and nearly all gathering places. We've seen a run on everything from frozen foods to toilet paper. So over the past couple of weeks, I've spent a lot of time and energy trying to decipher what the experts are saying about COVID-19 and the coronavirus. I certainly do not believe that I'm an expert on this, and I know that the situation is evolving even as we speak. It would appear that those most at risk in our community and in our church community would be those over the age of 60 and those with a compromised immune system. As I shared this past Sunday in our service, our local hospital administration, as well as the CDC, has suggested that those with diabetes, COPD, and the elderly are certainly the most at risk of COVID-19 as well as influenza. So if you are in that at-risk category, I believe it is wise and even prudent for you to take the utmost precautions during this time. There is certainly a need for all of us to protect ourselves and practice good hygiene. The simplest form, of course, is to wash your hands thoroughly throughout the day and cover your mouth during coughs or sneezes. If you're feeling ill or out of sorts, separate yourself as soon as you can from the public and seek medical attention as needed. Now, as we move forward, um, I would ask you to please to understand my heart. It's not my intention to downplay or to minimize the spread or the effect of this virus. However, it is also my intent to not be driven by fear. According to the United States Center for Disease Control, the CDC, there are three levels of community impact or transmission for this virus. Level number one is none to minimal. It is defined as evidence of isolated cases or limited community transmission. Case investigations are underway. No evidence of exposure in large communal settings such as healthcare facilities, school, and mass gatherings. By this definition, this is the category that the state of Minnesota falls into. As of yesterday, March 17th, Minnesota had conducted more than 2,762 tests and identified 77 positive cases of COVID-19. There have been no deaths reported to the best of my knowledge. The CDC has put out mitigation strategies and activity recommendations for each of those given categories. And for the category that Minnesota falls into, I'd like to read to you what the CDC has recommended. Community and faith-based organizations. In the none to minimal category, Know where to find local information on COVID-19 and local trends of COVID-19 cases. Know the signs and symptoms of COVID-19 and what to do if an organization's members or staff become symptomatic. Identify safe ways to serve those that are at high risk or vulnerable. Review, update, or develop emergency plans for the organization especially consideration for individuals at increased risk of severe illness. Encourage staff and members to stay home and to notify organization administrators of illness when sick. Encourage personal protective measures among the organization, members and staff. For example, stay home when sick, hand washing and respiratory etiquette. Clean frequently touched surfaces at organization gathering points daily. Ensure hand hygiene supplies are readily available in the building. Now I understand that all schools in Minnesota, restaurants, many businesses, and even churches are closing. And we certainly respect their choice to do that. In conversation with our elders, we at Christian Fellowship are choosing to continue our weekend services as well as any small groups and classes that meet during the week. We will review this on a weekly basis. Many people depend on the interaction of fellow believers for strength, for fellowship, and for community. We believe that as a fellowship, we can offer support to one another and encourage one another, and that, in fact, this difficulty gives us an opportunity to live out our faith in the midst of a difficult or uncertain time. Now, if you're a participant at Christian Fellowship and choose not to attend services, please understand 
that there is no condemnation in that, and that we continue to ask God's blessing for you. If you feel that you're sick or that your health is compromised in any way, or that you're vulnerable in this situation, please stay away from any services. For our brothers and sisters in other congregations, we certainly respect your decision to either continue, modify, or suspend your services. We appreciate your ongoing care for your congregations. We ask God to continue to bless, protect, and heal this community, this nation, and this world. God bless each one of you.